Okay, we're ready to get started here this morning. Uh, my name again is Ray Fugit, and the uh, session that we're going to do right now is Making Sense of Netless Compare in CAM350 and DFM Stream. Uh, Mike Harris is going to present. Uh, Mike, as most of you know, is our lead tech support person. He's been doing, a, he, I think he has one year on me as far as the CAM350 goes. Uh, so close to 25 years, 20 somewhere in there, and he's been doing tech support for 30 years. So if you haven't talked with Mike before, uh, if you do have a question, I always highly recommend giving him a holler. Thanks, Ray. Well, everyone, welcome to Making Sense of Netless Compare in CAM350. Before we get started, we should probably cover a few basic definitions. Uh, an extracted net a.k.a. CAN350 net, these are nets generated by graphics uh, by CAN350. Uh, external net is uh, the imported net we use for compare, usually an IPC net list. Graphics is graphical data on screen in CAN350, and copper is graphical data on electrical layers. What is netless compare? It is a tool that we use to find opens and shorts and other problems. It does this by comparing an extracted netlist versus an external netlist. To understand how netlist compare works, we need to understand what these two netlists are. CAN350's netlist extract creates our CAN350 netlist. It creates a netlist from graphics on copper layers. It starts with a flashed pad, then it finds any traces or polygons or other pads that short to that pad, makes them all into the same net. It also looks for drills that pass through that all that all those graphics and connects them to other layers. Once it's all done, it numbers it in the order that they were created, in the order that it found the net. So the first net it creates is called net zero, next one is net one, and so on. It's worth noting that if the graphics are changed after netless extract is done, the net list is not updated. This is especially important for older products. Uh, is in 14, we have the netless extract as part of the compare process, although you can turn it off, not advised. Um, you want to make sure that if you do update your graphics, like you had to change your drill layer, you had to re-import something, you decided to move something or anything like that, you need to make sure that the netlist is once again extracted so that it is, matches the graphical data on screen. Also worth noting, there are formats like ODB++ and IPC2581. These files are, uh, contain both an extracted netlist and an external netlist. There's some temptation to use uh, the extracted netlist that comes with those files, but there's no reason to. Uh, there's nothing about those files that forces that netlist to match the graphics at all. It's just a separate container. That's all it is. So you want to make sure that each time, even with ODB++ or IPC2581, that you extract a netlist uh, when you do a compare. The external net is a little different. Uh, an external IPC net is a group of test points. A test point is defined by size and an XY location. It's also assigned as top or bottom or through hole, but that's it. There's no routing information uh, in the external net list that tells us how to get from one point of a net to another point of a net. So we can't really, when we do netless compare, we can't really validate whether or not a particular trace or other piece of copper is correct or not unless it's one of those test points. Uh, it's best to imagine an uh, external net list as a board without routing or, or even an unfinished connect the dots puzzle. So CAM350 Netlist Compare again is the comparing of an extracted net list versus the external net list. As the IPC net list does not give us test points, we can't tell you how they're supposed to connect. All we can do is we can tell you that there is an open or a short but CAN350 can't take you to the exact spot where the open or short occurred. With a short, what CAN350 does is it highlights each net. With small nets, this can help. For large shorts, you need to use other methods. With open, it's a little better. It shows one in gray and the other one in white. Uh, and this can also be helpful, but again, at some point, you're going to want to understand exactly why it's an open and find a location. And we're just going to take a quick look at that right now. So here we have a basic board. Uh, we can see that we already have an external netlist loaded. So 
worth noting there. And uh, we have a top negative, a few internal layers, bottom, and a bunch of drill layers uh, creating some uh, blind and buried. But we're going to do a normal process here. In most cases, people just jump right in and do the compare. In this case, we're going to leave this box unchecked uh, because we already have an external net list imported. And other than that, we're just going to run things now and uh, come back to it later if we need to. Because, uh, again, in most cases, you're, you're going to be basically be running it, looking for errors, and when they're reported, then you're going to come back and look at maybe your settings that you used. Once it's done, the external netlist uh, window needs to be closed, and on we've automatically jumped to the Air Explorer tab, which is one of these tabs down here. Uh, we have some shorts, and as you can see, it's showing you a lot basically the whole board, uh, because this is a, a short involving ground and uh, one of the power planes. Uh, so to understand that, we're going to need to find a better method of tracing it out, which we're, we're going to show you in a bit. And of course, here's the open. It's a bit better. Uh, we can see that the white and the gray are different, uh, are, are basically supposed to be the same net, but they don't connect somehow. But again, it's not explicitly showing you where the error is. But before we get into tracing the net, we need to make sure that our setup was correct in the first place. A few things you want to do. You want to turn on your external net view to make sure that the net lines up with the data and looks like the data. Uh, in cases where you have a net list that doesn't, isn't correct for the database, you're just going to get nothing but false errors and the whole process is incorrect because the net list, external net list is bad. You want to look at your layer assignments, make sure that the layer types are labeled correctly. You want to check your external and extracted net list to make sure they look reasonable. Uh, you want to check your drill data, and in this case with blind and buried, you want to make sure that your layer sets are correct. So once again, we can go here into back in the CAN 350. I'm going to unhighlight this here by using a control click, by the way. And we can need to go into options here. And we could also go into file options as well. It's the same thing. And here on uh, the under editors, under cam editor, we scroll down just a little bit, we find show external nets. Uh, by default, CAN350 uses red for external nets, uses a, a V, a caret, and an X for the shapes. It actually defaults to 50. Uh, I'm, I've set this to 30 because it matches the data a little better. In general, you want your external net list to display in a way that it doesn't distract, doesn't block things, so that it looks good and you can understand it. Uh, and because of that, because the V and the caret in the same place looks exactly like an X to me, at least, I'm going to change this X to a target, as is my usual habit. Uh, I'm not going to use different colors here for the nets, because I find that personally distracting. I just need to, the, the shape will tell me what a net is. I don't need different colors to point that out as well. And the more colors you have on screen, the more it is to take in and the more possibility you're going to miss some small detail. Now that we've set the external nets to display, we can see them on screen. If we zoom in here, we can see that the through holes are lining up nicely with some uh, round pads, which is good. Uh, we can see some top side pins here. Those are the top side Vs, and it's lining up with top side, because that's our green uh, top side pads. And we can see that some bottom side pads are also lining up nicely. If we zoom out to the whole board, we can see that uh, the nets are inside the board, uh, hitting all the spots pretty much. So this looks great. This is, this is a perfectly good external netless in my opinion. Next up, we want to take a look at the, layers, uh, the layer types. We have a top, we have a negative, and it's worth taking an extra look at a negative plane to make sure that is indeed negative. If this was actually a positive plane, as in photographically positive, uh, this would have given us a bad netless extract if we had it set incorrectly. And then, of course, nothing but false errors. And, of course, we have some internal layers here as well. Uh, this is actually a power plane. It's not really important that we label it power plane versus uh, positive plane versus internal, uh, as all we need to know in, with netless extract and netless compare is that drawn, copper, it, drawn data is copper. And in this case, internal treats it like copper. So we can just leave it like that. And finally, we have the bottom layer. Uh, also, we, as we went through, we sort of can see that things line up nicely. If you have misaligned layers, again, you're going to get a bad netless extract and a bunch of false errors. 
And finally, we can come in here to uh, Layer Sets, which is a little uh, tab at the bottom here. And we can see we have Layer Set 1, which is being connected by Drill 1 through 3, and we have Layers 1 through 3 specified, and 3 through 4, and 4 through 6. When setting up layer sets, you want to make sure you include all layers in the layer set. We're not going to assume if you give us four and six, that's five supposed to be in there. You've got to give us five as well. And also we have down here the through drill. And this is not the through drill because it's named UN in this case, so we know it's the correct one. Another way you can do that, or an additional way that you can check on your layer information, is to come in here to Layer Stack Up. And here we have a GUI where you can click on things and it will highlight them for you. And you can see exactly where things are being used. We have our vias 1 through 3 connecting 1 through 3, or 3 and 4, and our 4 and 6 here. So all that looks great. So uh, at this point, we have to assume that these errors we got are definitely some real errors. So we're going to follow a short. Our goal with a short is to understand why one net is shorting to another. To do this, we pick one of the shorting nets to follow. Uh, one short can result in many errors, so troubleshooting one, you may understand all of your shorts. So don't get overblown by the fact you got 50 shorts or 100 shorts or, or however many shorts. Pick one to follow. And if we're going to pick one to follow, it's important that we pick a good one to follow. A good net to follow uh, has a small number of points. You don't want to follow ground or power because that's going to be a lot of work. Also, if it's grouped in a small area, that is less work as well. It's less panning. It's easier to see. So we're going to want to pick something like that. The setup to find a short, again, you want to make sure that your external net list is on. Uh, this set up external nets to display the way you like. Make sure that no layer is red, or if you're using a, if you're using a different color for your nets, external nets, Make sure no layer uses that color. Uh, red on red, you can't, you can't see the details. It, it'll look solid red. Uh, top and bottom darker colors is my preference. Uh, I can see highlighted nets much better. And of course, we're going to use our external nets pane to select uh, our external net. And we'll show you this in, a, in just a moment here. The net tracking process is you pick an endpoint on the top or bottom and start following where the net goes. You have your external net list highlighted in white. All other nets are going to be shown in red because, again, the external nets are on. If you find a spot where the copper is shorting a red and a white external net, that's your short. Also, each time you change layers, and you will probably have to change layers, make sure you review all drill layers. And I'll show you a little shortcut for this to make it a little easier. So back here in CAM350, uh, we have our top layer, and we're going to turn on my drill layers here, all of them, all of them at once. And I have them set for nice colors right now that show well against things. I have the plated, unplated, the same color, because I only really care about the fact that these layers go all the way through the board. That's the only important thing to me right now. I'm going to go ahead and select them using the shift and the down arrow, and then right click and make them reference. This way, no matter what layer I select, they're going to stay on. So I'm jumping between layers. I don't have to constantly come back here and turn these back on again. So finding a good short here. Um, we have ground and VCC. That's not what you want to get involved in. That's everything. We also have uh, ADD, back drill, and U10 LO2. Usually, the smallest net is the one that is reported least in your shorts and last. So probably U10 LO2 is our smallest net. The reason for this is that we use a scanning method to find our nets that are having a problem in the first place. And of course, your larger nets with more points that are more spread out will get found first and get reported first. So let's go ahead and check out U10 LO2. To find it first, and again, I'm just going to go with the top layer here to keep things simple. I'm going to go to external nets, and rather than use the scroll down here, I'm just going to come over here and type in U10LO2. Uh, you don't need to be case sensitive here. It'll figure it out. And there's our net. I had auto find, auto fit, and highlight all selected. So when I selected that net, it zoomed me right to where it is, the extents of it, and it's tightly grouped in the board. It's only four points. This is an ideal net to follow. 
we have two top side pins. We have a bottom side and a through hole. So coming over here, and I'm just using the plus and minus and sometimes the insert key to pan around, but again, your preference. Uh, we're going to take a look at this. It starts off with a bottom side pad, so we're going to start off on the bottom side. And I can verify here, oh, right here, uh, this is again why it's important to highlight your nets because these things look very similar. If you don't have it highlighted, I could have ended up following this one instead. Anyway, we can see that they connect, so that's no problem there. We also see that there is an orange drill, which is a through drill. That means we need to follow it up to some other layers. Coming up to layer five, it passes through. Layer four, again, passes through. Layer three, there's a trace. But before following that, let's go ahead and check layers two and one. Nothing happened over there, so let's come back here. I'm going to use the Q key to highlight the trace, so that way I can uh, basically cue in a click. That way you can follow the trace well enough and look for problems, because, again, it's getting kind of busy right here as it's dodging around all these paths. But nothing ends up shorting along the way, so we can come over to here. Uh, we have a pink drill, which is one through three. So we know we don't need to look at four, five, and six. So let's go up to two, passing through there, one. Again, it's going off again to the north. So following it up, we come to this pad here. And right here, we see something interesting. There is an arc shorting it to this copper here. There's another arc here shorting to this one. And as this is a red net, that is a different net. That's a short. And if we want to find out which one it is, we can go to Query External Net, click on it, and that's ground. So that one was pretty easy. Let's go ahead and try another one. Uh, first, to clear the decks here, we're going to unhighlight things and control click to dehighlight that and come back to Air Explorer. Uh, this time, let's go ahead and follow ADD03. So once again, we're going to come over to External Nets. We're going to type in ADD03 to find it. And it's zoomed out a little far here, but we know because it's going to use auto fit, there's got to be something there. We can see the white bottom side and through over here. And down over here on the left side, we can see a pair of top side test points. So we're just going to zoom in on those. And as they're top side, we want to turn on the top layer. We immediately see a drill there, but we know that's a three to four drill, so that's not important. Uh, this pink drill here is a one to three drill, so that is important, something that we're using. Uh, so we need to follow this down to layer two, nothing happens. Layer three, it jumps over to that three to four drill, and as this is layer three, it is doing something now. It's connecting it here to four, where it goes off on a little jaunt to the north. And again, uh, using the uh, insert key and plus and minus, I'm just going to follow it along, looking for a problem, and there it is. Here's a drill hit, just shaving the high side of it. We can tell that there's a top side test point there, and that is a different net. And as this is a through drill, that drill is going to connect to that top side pad. And if we do query net once again, we can see that this is indeed a different net, not ADD03, but the back DR. And uh, just as, a, as an aside here, as this is a through drill, it's going all the way down here, connecting to this, connecting to this, and that's our ground to power short right there. So that's how we found it without having to trace everything. Usually all these errors are interconnected somehow. And the reason, of course, that those were shorts is, again, to remind you, is that because copper is connecting two different external nets, and we saw one in red and one in white. So we know that's where the uh, error is. Things we can also learn here are with large number of errors, sometimes the patterns uh, of errors repeat. We saw those arcs uh, on the top layer earlier, and those arcs, those inverted arcs could have repeated elsewhere, causing more errors. And, of course, with that drill hit, that drill hit was shorting not just uh, our two nets, but everything, the shorting ground and power together. So that also showed us a big error. Uh, it's critical, of course, you always want to make sure that your external net list uh, is on and make sure that before you get too far into things, it lines up with your data and it looks correct. You can always consider the possibility that you might have a bad external net list 
Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, you need to recognize that otherwise you're going to waste a lot of time trying to understand why something's a short. Moving on to opens. The process is largely the same as it is for a short. The difference is that we have two CAM350 nets this time and one external net as opposed to two external nets and one CAM350 net. We still want to find the shorter net, but this time we want to find the shorter CAM350 net. And once again, we're just going to go back over here to Air Explorer and hit that. And I left some external nets highlighted here, so we need to come back in here and control click to turn those off. And back in Air Explorer, of course, it still has that highlighted. And when we come over here, we can see that, again, we have uh, our open here, part of it highlighted in gray, part of it highlighted in white. Uh, I'm going to start with the gray part just because it's an arbitrary decision. And for some people, there's a temptation to leave the gray highlight on because you're thinking you'll find out where the white comes in and you can see the differences there. I don't advise that because you're going to miss out on things like you don't, can't see your drills right now because of the gray highlight and you can't see uh, your net points either. And you can get just as good of a highlight by highlighting uh, the external net. In this case, uh, triple dollar 158. So I'm going to unhighlight that, come over to external nets, type in 158. And there we have our net highlighted once again, uh, but this time we can also see everything else. Um, so let's start off on the top layer. Now, sometimes you might see a little problem like this happen uh, where the highlighting gets a little confused. If you just double click on your drill layer and then reactivate that, it'll figure it out. Also, you can use the redraw key, which probably would have been a better choice on my part. Try that first. Anyway, we can see that the uh, top layer is connecting to each other fine here, these two pads connecting just great. Uh, and because they connected on the top layer, we don't need to worry about them anywhere else. Coming down, we can see that there's a little bit of activity here on the third layer, but once again, we want to go through all the other layers and make sure nothing else is happening because, again, these are through drills. Uh, there could have been something else going on in some other layer as well. But all we have is this one tray, so we're going to follow it once again. And here we see a little weird thing, a little break. That's an artifact from Gerber. Sometimes in Gerber, they'll draw one line, go off and do some paths, and draw another line later. In CAM 350's terms, these ends up being separate lines, so not a big deal. We can just query the next line and keep following it. And we're just going to come along here. And again, I'm going to slow down. Even this isn't a short, I'm going to slow down here and take a look uh, just to see. And we get to a pad. And I immediately see a problem because I am not seeing any drills here. Uh, I, sh I was expecting to see either a 1 to 3 or a orange uh, through, but there's neither one there. And just to double check that, I'm just going to toggle through these layers and make sure there's nothing there. So that's our open right there. There's nothing to connect that to the top layer here where this test point is still waiting for a connection, and uh, that's how you find an open. There are other types of errors that Nelson's Compare can show you as well, and we're going to cover these each. Uh, they're worth following up on because, again, any time there's a difference between your external net list and your extracted net list, there's a potential for some error there. And even if it's not an open or short, CAM350 still wants to communicate to you what that error is. Uh, then these errors are no copper, when, which occurs when an external net does not hit any graphics. Extra external net at point, which occurs when an external net hits graphics, but there is no extracted net there. And don't worry, there's pictures on the next slide, so this will make more sense. And uh, missing external net for cam net. This is when an extracted net has no equivalent external net. First up, no copper. Again, an external net indicator is not on any data. And here we can see a, a screen cap here. Oops a screen cap here where we have a uh, test point, top side test point, just sitting out there with nothing, nothing shorting to it, uh, no copper there at all. Uh, we also see, and in, in my case, I usually have the external net list on, nothing here on this pad. So this pad is not being reported at all. It might be that this test point is misaligned. Uh, maybe all of them are misaligned, or maybe just this one is misaligned. Um, and because it's misaligned and this one is not being reported on, we can't really check it. 
So if there was a problem with this pad, like it was doing a short that it wasn't supposed to do, you're opening up the potential for missing a real problem. Uh, so when you get this kind of error, try to figure out why it's happening. Uh, usually, again, it'll be misalignment, at which point all of them will be misaligned, and then you need to make adjustments. Or you have a bad external net list, at which point you need to go back to the CAD source. Extra external net at point. Uh, this is where the external net hits a graphics, but uh, the graphics have no net. This is usually a result of a disagreement on what constitutes a net between CAM350 and the CAD system that created it in the first place. If a pin is isolated, then uh, perhaps the external net did not include single pins, or, uh, and you could adjust that in your settings to match. And let me show you that real quick, uh, just uh, as, a, as a possible case here. Uh, here we can see that uh, we have some isolated pads. CAM350 did not put a net on these pads, and nor did the external net. So this is an agreement. Uh, but if you came over here and in Netless Extract, uh, you had selected assigned single pins to unconnected pads, CAM350 would have put nets there. This would have caused uh, a, an error to occur uh, in the fact that uh, you wouldn't have external nets to match those. And it's possible that the CAD system could also do the same thing, where basically it decided that these single pins were nets, at which point we would get this error, basically telling us that CAM350 doesn't have a net there. And when you have that problem, you do want to go back in and check that box to allow single pins to unconnected pads. Because again, you want your external net and your CAM350 net extracted net to match as much as possible. Because if we leave things out, they don't get tested, and then that opens the door for possible problems. There is an option uh, to turn this and the, uh, one of the other ones off in the external nets, uh, where we can check these boxes here to ignore extra external nets or ignore nets uh, on CAN net list from, that are missing uh, an external net. Um, you can do this, and the only time I think it's a really good idea is if your CAD system is being inconsistent about its single pins. Uh, otherwise, I would prefer to leave them on at least for the first run just so that I understand what's going on and I can find potential problems. Perhaps on later runs, if you don't want to be bothered with it, you can turn it off. And finally, again, another related uh, error, missing external net for CAM net. This one's possibly more serious, though. Um, this is when CAM350 has placed a net on something, but the external net has nothing. And in this case, it's obviously because we checked, we have this highlighted here, which is uh, showing that it's a net. We checked allow single pin nets, and we extracted a net list that way. But if this was actually had some tracing on it, uh, or was a copper fill of some kind, that means that that's a piece of copper that the external net did not mention. This might be text, at which point you can be, feel fine about ignoring it, uh, but it might also be something real on the board, at which point if the external net list didn't mention it, we're not checking it as part of the process. So that covers uh, pretty much everything with uh, Netless Compare and CAM350, and I guess we'll open the floor to questions and answers now. All right, thank you, Mike. Uh, I do have some questions here, and please continue to type those into the Q&A window as you uh, see fit. Um, Mike, does the Netlist Compare work with uh, a CAD Netlist, something like a, or maybe a, like a neutral file, that sort of thing? In many cases, no, and in all cases, it's mostly a bad idea. Uh, your CAD net lists, well, many of the neutral files, like, like a mentor neutral file, we don't have an import for at all. And the other net lists don't include coordinates. They only include ref des information. So you like, you'll say like pin U1 uh, connects to, you know, pin U1-1 connects to pin U1-2 or something like that. Um, but no coordinates. Everything in CAM350 Netlist Compare uses coordinates uh, unless you get a database source that has pins on it, um, that has part information on it, then you could do it. But again, we find uh, the IPC netlist verification much more accurate and easier to use. So it's, it's, and all your major CAD systems export that format, so it's worth getting. 
Um, another question. I often have problems when I load intelligent data in doing that list compare. Um, any ideas what might cause that? I think we're uh, talking depends about on the type of. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, it depends on the error, but any error that you get on import, uh, if it doesn't impact the graphics, you're going to be okay. Uh, but you want to track down that error and understand it. If you're importing ODB++ and you're getting uh, some error messages, I would encourage you to update your CAM350 because we're constantly working with that format and getting better at it. Uh, but because there's so many different sources for it, it's a constant struggle. And sometimes we produce errors that aren't really errors uh, as far as you're concerned. Uh, we find things like uh, there's a toe print that has a slight problem, but the graphics are still there, the net's still there. Uh, and as you're extracting a net list on the data anyway, you're not really going to be concerned with anything other than the graphics. So just take a look okay. at the board and make sure it looks good. Yeah, I'm just going to jump in there. I've seen you tell people to explode the components on occasion, so is that maybe what they're talking about? In older releases, we had to do that. Um, we had problems with uh, Netless Extract not getting getting tied up in the component information. Uh, and, and I guess if it, there was a really weird problem, you might want to explode all your parts. Uh, and that is an option you can do. I can just show it to you real quick here because I like to. Uh, we go under tools these days, and under explode, uh, we have part. And when you do explode part, you want to make sure that your top and bottom layers are on because that's where your parts are. If you leave your bottom layer off, we're only going to explode the, the parts on your top. And then you just hit uh, the thing and hit select all. And if I had parts here, it would have exploded them. <laughs> uh, but I don't. Okay. Um when I run Netless Comparison, I get one large set of opens uh, with uh, a net called None. Ah, Can you that would have been something for me. I probably should have covered that in the presentation. That's a very good question. Uh, so, yeah, we come back over here to home. We have a concept in Camp 350 uh, and in the end of the IPC 356A spec of a no-connect net, which basically is a net, give it a name, often None, sometimes n slash c, and this is a bunch of points that aren't supposed to connect to, to anything, even themselves. So it's sort of the opposite of a net. But here in setup, we can actually specify the external net uh, that's a no connect here. So we could just put in dollar none dollar. And at that point, not only will it not call that at open, because they're supposed to be open. We now understand that those are no connect nets and all of them are supposed to be open. But we'll also check to make sure they don't short to anything. So even better than ignoring them, we're actually checking them for you to make sure that those no connect pins are definitely not connected to anything. Okay, and I'm and just going to jump in there. Uh, is... Um, the reason that it's calling it open is because they all have the same name. Yeah. I, again, if you call it in the format, uh, it, it calls a net like you know net zero, net one, net two, and it lists a bunch of coordinates uh, that that connects to it. it. The format is exactly the same when it gets this net none. It calls it net none or net n slash c, and then it lists all the points that are supposed to be in it. So it, unless CAM three hundred and fifty is in on the the, the secret that that is the net that isn't supposed to connect. There's nothing in the file that tells us that. So we need your help to, to figure that out. But once we're told, uh, we'll treat it appropriately. Okay. Uh, I've got a comment here. I don't know if there's enough information, so we might have to take this offline. But it says, if I read in GenCAD, there is a problem with net zero from Expedition. So I assume they're going from Expedition to GenCAD. Does that sound familiar? Or is that something we need to take offline? Uh, I haven't heard that before, but I would point out that, again, when we're – I mean, if that's the ex – I, I don't know if GenCAD includes an external net. I don't think it does. So at that point, the net would be the net applied to the graphics, and that's a net that we shouldn't be caring about in Netless Compare because we don't want to trust uh, – we don't want to trust the GenCAD formatted nets applied to the graphics. We want to create our own to make sure it's correct. So regardless of the source uh, of the data, 
we have a reference net list and we always, and, I, and you've said this several times, so I'm just paraphrasing, but we always want to extract a net list from the graphics for that comparison purposes. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, uh, I think that's it. Uh, if you do come up with something afterwards, and, and the gentleman who just asked this question, if you want to follow up with that, uh, please feel free to send that over to us, of course. Uh, and I, I do understand that you're in another country. Uh, you can go through your local rep there, but it will get to us eventually, and uh, and we can, uh, we can get back with you on that. Um, all right, thank you, Mike. Uh, Here's another one. Uh, how about dummy nets from Cadence Allegro? That's, uh, and I'll answer that one. I'm sorry, Mike. Jump on your <laughs> your uh, your show here, but uh, that's what the nun net is, or the NC net is. Those are the dummy nets. Uh, am I correct in that, Mike? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so again, thank you for your time this morning. Hopefully, it helped. Now. Oh, there's a follow-up question of that. How would we enter them in CAM 350? Can you bring that dialog up again, Mike, and show? Absolutely, them yeah. So when you're doing your on your home tab and you're setting up your compare, right down here is where you can type in the name of the net that you want to treat as a no connect or, in Cadence terms, a dummy net. And whatever it's called, it's called none, or if it's called n slash c, or it's called like you know noodle soup. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You type in whatever you want, as long as that net name appears in the net list, we will treat it as uh, not only something that we're not concerned about opens with, but something that we're going to make sure that doesn't short to anything else. Okay. And thanks for those questions, by the way. Uh, hopefully that uh, answered those. And uh, I'm just going to, as an aside, uh, a lot of you I have met in person, and some of you I've even trained, but uh, as, you, as you know, I've always suggested that anytime you're stuck on a failure with Netless Compare to get with support, because uh, using these methods that Mike's described there, that's how he tracks them down. So hopefully these will help you track down those issues. Uh, and again, anybody that's been to one of my webinars knows that I I believe Netless Compare is the single most important thing you can do before releasing your design to manufacturing. I think every designer should do it. Uh, I will uh, mention golden board testing. If you don't send an IPC D356 Netless, they're doing golden board testing. And even when they're, even when they're, uh, uh, just doing the comparison in their tool, your manufacturer, or you yourself, uh, you need that reference net list. There is an additional question popped up here. Do you need the dollar signs on either side of the net name? Uh, if the net name is named dollar, none dollar, which is a common one, then yes. Uh, if it's named just none, then none. Again, it's we're just going to be matching exactly the name that as it appears inside the net list. So if it comes back with you and says there's a bunch of opens in a net none, then that's what you type in. Or if it says dollar none, then that's what you type in. All right. Thank you, Mike. All right. Again, if you do come up with other questions later on, uh, you know, you can send those over to support. And uh, just don't do it Friday because Mike's out. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, here's another question. Sorry. Oh, we keep getting these, so I'll, I'll, we'll stay on here. we got sure. plenty of time. Did I yeah. ha miss how to get short report output? Mm. Um, well, it wasn't part of the presentation, but uh, I think if I come over here to reports and go to netlist, or actually... It would be off the, of the error explorer, right? Oh, okay. Error chart more? Error report, there it is. So, yeah, you could print or export that and uh, make adjustments as you may want to. Uh, it'll, Good it'll, question. 
this one, this one's a little this one's a little tight here, but when it prints out, it'll get uh, a little wider. And you can also export it as CSV. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's a good question. Um, and you can also, and I'll throw this in on my own. You can also use this in conjunction with CamView, as I did yesterday in the presentation. Uh, we're looking at our problems. We can be using CamView, and we can even cross probe if it's one of those tools that we cross probe to, because you're going to want to fix whatever the problem is back in your CAD system anyway. I want to thank everybody for uh, attending today. I want to thank Mike for this very informative. Uh, you've taught me some things here uh, in the last two days going through this um, uh, information about doing Netlist uh, uh, validation. This is what really this session was about. Um, again, thanks everybody for your time this morning, and uh, have a great day. Thank you, Mike. Thank you.